walking around Whole Foods with my, you know, fam, I got a brisket, I got a prime rib, I got some, you know, I got some good pieces of meat in my cart. Um, but I'm looking at the clientele uh, who, you know, look kind of like me, right? And they got similar things in their carts. And I'm thinking, these are people who are choosing to spend more money in part because they can. And so there is, a, you know, there's, there's nothing but privilege in a Whole Foods, right? Um, but they have, they have come to the conclusion that eating food that has not been uh, pesticided, insecticided, uh, antibiotic, uh, you know, across, you know, you know, for its entire life, uh, given growth hormone, if it's dairy that you're eating, you know, all of these things. These are people who have come to this decision that they are, they because they can, they are willing to spend more for such food, especially for their family, right? A lot, a lot of people will say, well, even if I'm sort of on the cusp of being able to afford it, definitely for my children, because mm -hmm. I know that they're growing, right? This is also the demographic, though, that, and I don't have, I don't have a chart here, but I believe that it is sort of common knowledge uh, that, you know, well-heeled people shopping at Whole Foods are some of the people who were most adamant about getting the novel vaccines and honestly also about giving them to their children. Mm -hmm. So where's the disconnect? Like, you know, this this is a this is a question that we've come back to over and over and over again. But I was struck by it in what felt like a new way to me, looking around, going, "How are you making these choices that cost you more money than they than they need to, in order to get food that I understand to be better for me and that are better for you if they are what they claim they are?" You know, putting aside what I've since learned about USDA organic certification, et cetera. How is it that you are also the people who are yelling for mandates that everyone get this very new, very synthetic, very hyper novel treatment that actually isn't even safe or effective? How, like, how do those two things live in the same head? Well, uh, unfortunately, I think I know how they do. And it's okay. something that you and I have actually talked about recently, which is, and I'm not, I don't want to portray people as being this way. I think some people are this way across every topic and all of us are this way across certain topics. But most people do not have a model in their minds about how stuff works, right? Most people, if they took biology, they took it in high school, they sort of, you know, they, they got through the test, they didn't think too deeply about it, maybe they were struck by a concept here or there, but they didn't walk away with a a model of how a creature actually functions. They walked away yeah. with some some factual knowledge. And by the way, a lot of that is on the teachers who failed to convey Absolutely. the the intuitive, fascinating model that might have been passed along. I thought biology was incredibly boring after I took it in high school. I had that bad a biology teacher. Yeah. I got an A. And I was like, well, if I can get an A in a class that's that boring, what possibly could be of interest there? Yeah, yeah. I, I had yeah. a very different experience. You had a different I, teacher. I did. Yeah. I think yeah. I would have ended up I mean, I was biologically, as my grandfather uh, used to point out, um, Eric landing in math was a little bit of a surprise, but me landing in biology wasn't because I was always fascinated by critters. But I mm -hmm. also did benefit from a couple of biology teachers who really were good at making it intuitive, and yeah. um, and that fostered my my love of it. But anyway, the point is, most people don't have a model, right? Yeah. What they have in lieu of a model, I would call a Cartesian nightmare, right? So the mm -hmm. Descartes became troubled by the fact that he didn't know almost anything on his own, right? He took almost everything on the word of somebody who claimed to have discovered it. Yeah. And that is an alarming thing to realize. Now, in fact, there's nothing wrong with it. It's the only way, especially as the range of things that one might know has grown radically in the last couple hundred years, um, you can't know. You, if you set yourself the job of establishing everything that you believe personally, you'll get nowhere, right? You just don't have time to run that many experiments. And so we all have to take a lot of stuff on a kind of faith. But mm -hmm. the question is, how good is your model of how faith works, mm. right? If what you do is you proxy your belief to a group of people who, you know, they all went to college, they studied different things. Oh, there's a doctor in the group, there's a physicist, there's a an engineer and a lawyer and whatever. <laughs> and the point is, well, 
okay, this group has expertise in almost all the things you'd want to know. And so more or less, you know, to the extent that they become persuaded that something is dangerous, I should probably watch out. To the extent that they become persuaded that something is safe, they're probably about right. And the point is, that probably works until somebody starts gaming it in the way that has now taken off. Well, and it's more easily gamed. If no one in the group, and this will often be the case in hyper-educated groups of people, if no one in the group has skills in the physical world, because education is often correlated with disdain for physical work, right? I mean, th- I mean, this is criminal, frankly, that we have let that happen, but um, that very often people who are educated say, ah, oh, well, I, you know, I, I've outsourced having to take care of any of my physical needs, maybe, you know, with the exception of cooking, but, you know, I certainly don't do... I, I, you know, oh, we did our bathroom. No, you had you paid someone to do your bathroom for you, right? Like this, yeah. <laughs> this language, like, I'm, it's one of my pet peeves. Like I, I hate it when people who can afford to have other people do their work for them linguistically make the claim that they have done it because they had the money to, af- to, to be able to afford to pay other people. But if you have a group of people who actually don't manifest physical things in the world in any way, by, by craft, by, you know, physical activity, some, something, yeah. then they are much more likely to miss um, glaring logical errors when they show up. Yeah, totally, totally agree. And it has made them sitting ducks uh, for this very sophisticated effort to slide stuff by us, right? Yeah. And, you know, they got us. When they said mRNA, I thought, yeah, that's bound to be short term. Still doesn't make it safe, but mm-hmm. it's not a long term issue. It's a short term one, mm-hmm. right? And then you know, the the degree to which all of our assumptions, even yeah. those of us who are carrying a good model in the exact location, are being gamed is spectacular. But what it means is, I mean, we've seen a wholesale shift in what the people on a given team believe over time, right? Yeah. The number of authoritarian things, yeah. the number of anti-egalitarian things that the blue team is now spouting as if they're self-evident is amazing, yeah. right? Well, and I mean, just before the 2020 election, there were prominent Democrats, including our current vice president, who were saying that they wouldn't take the vaccine developed under Trump uh, until and unless I don't even know what the conditions were. Right. But, you know, the valence switched and, you know, no one on blue team, on team blue wants to talk about actually these vaccines were developed entirely under the president that you hate so much. Right. Uh, and it took apparently no more persuading, except that now there's someone different in the Oval Office who had nothing to do with it. And, and well, of course, Trump had nothing to do with it either. Like neither presidents don't have anything to do with the vaccine development, although they can, you know, encourage it. Uh, but, it, it, you know, as if who is in the Oval Office changes how safe or effective a medical, a novel medical treatment is. But, the, but you're making the error right there. What is it? That's a model. And you're saying that model doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Right? The idea Wait, that... So the, what, what's a model? That the person in the White House has a big influence on the technology that it might okay, arrive so in I'm saying that model doesn't make any sense. Well, but the point is you're describing as, it, as if folks have a model running in their minds that doesn't work. My point is it's not even a model. They don't have a model. They don't have a model. What they have is a jersey, right? The people wearing blue tend to spout the scientifically wise things. And so if what I more or less do, Mm. it's like driving the flow of traffic. You may not know what the last speed limit sign said, but you look around and the traffic, you know, there's the guy whizzing by in the left lane and there's a couple slow pokes in the right lane, but you're somewhere in the ballpark of reasonable. And the point is, if you do that, you end up flow of traffic on a normal road and if you somehow bumble into the Indy 500 then the flow of traffic doesn't tell you anything about what you can do you know what though actually this this is a fascinating analogy because um many modern cars now have a pop-up that tells you what the speed limit is yeah and there are many examples like that that happens to be the one that you use and that you know i know because we have one or two we definitely have a vehicle that doesn't do that because it's yep. from the 90s, um, but at least one of our vehicles does. And I think that in part this is this is uh, this is this allows the creeping authoritarianism. That's right? my point. Because because we are most of us are now being informed constantly of like what you're supposed to do. You don't need to even look around and be like I'm going to go with the flow. You don't even need to do that. It's like oh I know what I'm supposed to do. I don't even need to pay attention to like why is that guy going like that. Well. 
what I'm arguing is we are forced to proxy our understanding on a great many things socially, mm -hmm. right? We have to defer to people who know more than we do in places that we don't know much. Now, hopefully, what you and I do is we have a model that hopefully does not get ahead of what we actually understand that will allow us to detect some kind of illogic. Right? Even if somebody is talking about physics and we're not physicists, the point is they've got to stay within the realm of reasonable or explain why they're departing mm -hmm. before you know, we're going to be able to listen to the stuff that we can't comment on because it's beyond our knowledge. But if you toss out models entirely and your point is, look, these people, they ain't perfect. I'm sure they're wrong about some stuff we'll laugh about 20 years from now. But they're cutting edge. I mean, you know, they, they've gone to the right schools. They've talked to the but right people. But isn't there a model implicit in that? No. There's a well, model of they're educated. My, my point is there's the failure of the idea of models at the point that you go from having to proxy the majority of what you believe to other people to, well, I guess if I'm doing that for the majority of stuff, why don't I just do it for everything? I'll hang out with the smart people and I'll be smart. And my point is the smart people are shopping at Whole Foods. They're buying organic because it is safer right? And that means they have no mechanism for detecting that something has said, oh, those people have money. They buy organic because it's safer. Now, what definition do we have to swap before we can sell them our stuff under their label, right? Mm -hmm. And they will feel sophisticated serving it at their cocktail parties, and they won't have any idea why their friends are getting Parkinson's disease, right? So it's, it's exactly that. Once okay. you socially proxy the point is you are a sitting duck for anything that can pump stuff into your social environment through a social channel, which is what happened, right? We watched virtually every doctor screw up COVID, right? Mm -hmm. How is that possible? These people studied medicine. How right, could they get I mean, it so we, wrong? We knew until COVID, like everyone knew uh, that the medical profession was in thrall to big pharma. Like right. this, this, that was a... A widespread, commonly understood, sort of you know, democratically held position, right? Well, that the you know that the junkets and the free stuff and the pharma reps showing up in the office and giving you lots of stuff and telling you the words to use to um, help diagnose and push dr particular drugs on particular patients who showed up with things that maybe you couldn't diagnose, but probably it's this. Oh, and of course, if it's if you give them that, then you're going to need to give them this for the side effects for that. And like this was all no known. Yes, but until I don't... and like, but but now, like you, you say anything about that? It's like, oh, oh, you're one of those people. You're one of those people. But like, we were all talking about this five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. We were we were all talking about this. Right, but the problem, you know, I, I don't know how to convey it, but the problem is we were all talking about it using a common language. But there are two species using that language. I there think are, there's more than that. There, but they're broadly okay. speaking. You got people who are running some sort of a model. Sometimes it's crude, sometimes it's misinformed, but at least it's a model, right? The model tells you when something that is complete nonsense has been pumped in because suddenly your model throws an error and it's like, well, that can't be right. I mean, people watch this happen on our channel in real time, right? What was the error that we couldn't get past? They kept telling us this stuff was safe and there's no way on earth they could possibly have known it, Yeah. right? Yeah. So... It was that. It was like, okay, some social thing is broadcasting from every speaker in the house, from every periodical. This is safe. And I can, you know, on the back of an envelope, tell you why that can't be true. Well, and I guess we see this too on the other side. Uh, we, we've seen it personally where, uh, and, you know, I don't, I care less and less about the labels of left and right and Democrat and Republican. And um, yep. I just, I just liberal, conservative, like I just, they just mean almost nothing anymore, right? But for a while, it seemed very important because it was true um, to be repeatedly saying, nope, still liberal, still progressive. Like, you know, you know actually, politics haven't changed in the wake of Evergreen, for instance. Uh, but, uh, but our understanding of who is doing what on behalf of whom is changing. And a lot of people on the right, people who, you know, we're also still using those labels at the time, many of whom have also stopped, would say, no, 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 you're conservatives now. Yep. And the response that both of you, both you and I gave independently in, in many venues was, no, not a conservative because your definition is about who you're hanging out with. Yep. And this, this is a political position, not a social position.
And this actually really failed to compute for a lot of people on, on both sides, but we happened to run into it failing to compute for people who were lifelong conservatives. So like, no, if you're talking to me and we're getting along, then you must be a conservative. It's like, just because we're friends doesn't mean that we are the same thing in every regard. Like the, the social reality doesn't create the other reality. And I do think that this actually is a misunderstanding across uh, across domain. Yep. No, you found you found the exact proof, right? Because to say you're a conservative because you believe in these things as I, a conservative, believe in them is this social proxy. Mm -hmm. And the point is, look, no, there's actually an epistemology. I can show you how I know I'm not a conservative, despite the fact that I agree with you that a bunch of those things that you're defending need to be conserved. It's not that there's no conservatism, but the point right. is, hey, guess what? We can't stay here. We can't continue to do what we're doing. We yeah. need progress to save us. That's why I'm a progressive, mm -hmm. right? It's that simple. So that's a model. Yeah. It's not, you know, we could go into much greater depth, but the point is that's a very simple model mm -hmm. and it allows one to parse the speech who is a conservative, who is a liberal, who is a moderate, right? We can parse that speech using that model. And in any case, I guess my my overarching point would be it may be that social proxying is the slam dunk winner in a certain place where you have nothing at stake in certain eras when the thing isn't lying to you uh, right and left, right? It may be highly efficient, but mm -hmm. as soon as the thing starts lying to you as a, a matter of regular course, mm -hmm. you need a model. It's the only hope of figuring out what to listen to. Mm -hmm.